Over several years, the Great Famine of 1315 was one of the defining moments in the history of medieval Europe, an era of profound social, economic, and cultural changes. But a long and devastating series of climate change would lead to widespread starvation and loss of population. Want to know more? Then join us on a journey of exploring the mysteries of the past. In the spring of 1315, above normal rains fell over most of Europe. Through spring and summer, it continued to rain and the temperature remained cold. Under these conditions, the grains did not germinate. The grains were taken to silos in urns and pots. Feed for the animals could not be cured, so there was no feed for the cattle. Food prices started to rise. Prices in England doubled between spring and midsummer. In some provinces, wheat rose by more than 340% and peasants could no longer afford bread. Grain stocks for long-term emergencies were limited to nobles and lords only. Even in the face of population pressures, still above average harvests showed that some would go hungry. People began to gather edible roots, plants, and nuts, among other foods, in the forests. There are a number of documented incidents that show the extent of the famine. In one of them, King Edward II stopped at St. Albans on August 10, 1315, and there was no bread for him nor for his cutting. It was one of the rare occasions that the King of England went without food. The French, under Louis X, tried to invade Flanders, but being a region of the Low Countries, the fields were so soaked that his army was bogged down and forced to retreat, burning the provisions they could not carry. In the spring of 1316, it continued to rain on a European population lacking the energy and reserves to sustain itself. All segments of society, from nobles to peasants, were affected, but especially peasants, who made up 95% of the population. To provide some relief, the future was sacrificed, killing breeding animals, consuming crop seeds, abandoning children, and the elderly. Chronicles of the time also described many incidents of cannibalism. The peak of the famine was reached in 1317 when the wet weather ended. Finally, in the summer, the weather returned to its normal pattern. However, the people were so weakened by diseases such as pneumonia, bronchitis, and tuberculosis, and much of the seed stocks had been consumed, and it was not until 1325 that food levels returned to relatively normal pre-famine conditions. Historians debate the number of fatalities, but it is estimated that between 10% to 25% of the population of many cities and towns perished. But something worse was yet to come. The Great Famine marked an end to an unprecedented period of population growth that had begun around 1050. Although some believe that growth had already been slowing down for a few decades, the famine was undoubtedly a clear termination of high population growth. The Great Famine would have consequences for future events in the 14th century, such as the Black Death, when an already weakened population would be attacked again. The Great Famine was worse and the social question of calamity. While the plague annihilated an area in a few months, the Great Famine lashed out for years, dragging out the suffering of people who slowly starved to death, faced cannibalism, infanticide, and uncontrolled crime. The abnormal weather patterns were similar to those found in volcanic eruption events such as Mount Tambora in 1816 which caused the year without a summer in Europe. It is reported that there was an eruption on Mount Pinatubo in 1315. Did you know this story? Tell us here in the comments and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.